Okay, I'm going to get started. Today we begin lecture module 12, which corresponds to the textbooks chapter 12 and has the last Linux lab, Linux lab 12. Linux lab 12 is performed on the Academic server, so it's on the Hudson Valley server. 10 and 11 were in your virtual machines, but 12 is back on Academic. But before I get into information systems analysis design, I wanted to introduce and cover the final projects. So without further ado, let me go there. So in Linux labs, down here, right after 12, is the final projects. And you'll see this semester they're due May 11th. So the final projects consist of the final project submission, which is screenshots, as in the past with the Linux labs. You'll have a final project discussion board. And I'll cover this individually for each final project in just a minute. You also have an ethics discussion board. And that's in the ethics discussion boards here. And you'll see here, by the way, the uh, DBCC stands for Discussion Board Course Conclusion. So that's your final project discussion instructions. And I'll cover these in just a minute. Right now, I just want to cover the final projects themselves. Again, note that submission of all these items takes place in the course conclusion lecture module. So right below the lecture module, I think it's 14, in, in place of lecture module 15 is the course conclusion lecture module. And it has the final project submission, the final project discussion board, the ethics discussion board, and it also has the Linux operating system quiz. I'll talk about this in just a minute as well. With this page, please read it in its entirety first and then come back. But essentially, in a nutshell, what you're going to do is choose one of the final projects from the submenus. And I do list them below, and I'm going to describe them today, too, and who they're intended for. But the final projects here, you'll see advanced scripting, LAMP and WordPress, Kali Linux. So, but I'll cover these in just a minute. You'll submit the screenshots of your final project. And then you'll also present your experiences in completing the final project in the discussion board. And that is just as important. Again, I'll cover the ethics discussion board in just a minute. Yes? Do any of the final, final projects require the use of Ubuntu? There are final projects that require that. There are two final projects that don't require it. Okay. So, and those, I'll introduce those in just a minute. Okay. Note that the final projects are unsupported to the extent that you've done all the requisite reading and labs and preparatory material to complete the final projects. And I can't very well give you an answer and then give you a grade for my answer. So you've had all the preparation and you have sufficient time if you get started right now. In some cases, I'll talk about Kali Linux, you could have Kali Linux running, up and running, Oh, an hour after you get out of here. But the actual inter, uh, important part, part of that final project is actually using Kali Linux. But again, there'll be no stress there because you'll have it done and you'll just kind of move along. And you shouldn't have a stress with any one of these, by the way. So let me present the four final, or the various final projects. First, advanced scripting. Advanced scripting does not require a virtual machine. So there's the first one. It's done on the Hudson Valley Academic server. So it's similar to Linux Lab 12, but it goes beyond 12, of course. It can take anywhere I have, you know, till the 10 plus hours. I've had students do it in four to six. If you really know your Linux, you could zip through this final project. But take your time. Because if you hurry, you'll make errors, and they will come back to bite you, and you'll have to return to the beginning and verify every step that you're doing. So just take your time with it. And again, get started early. If you get started right now, you can easily be done in a week or two. Clear your plate for final exams, and that'd be great. The second, LAMP WordPress. So LAMP stands for the Linux Apache MySQL PHP stack. What you'll do is in your virtual machine, create a LAMP stack and then a WordPress instance. 
WordPress is a content management system for web design, for web content management. This used to be more difficult than it is now. Every semester, it gets easier and easier. If you don't have any problems, you could complete it very quickly. Now, this final project has built-in extra credit should you wish to pursue it. If you implement your LAMP and WordPress instance in the Amazon EC2 cloud, you'll get an extra point or two. This is incredibly valuable. The ability to walk into an organization and tell them you can implement a website for them in the Amazon cloud with no on-site servers, infrastructure, is just wonderful. Gives you a great understanding, introduces you to cloud computing even more, and that, again, is the way the world is going. So, by the way, if you're a web design student, I highly encourage you to do the LAMP WordPress implementation. This is what you'll be doing following graduation. Kali Linux. If you are a system and network administration student, I strongly encourage you to do the Kali Linux, formerly Backtrack Linux. Kali Linux is a integrated environment of Linux and the Kali security and penetration toolkit. This toolkit is downright lethal. Many people think that it should be illegal because the sniffing, the eavesdropping, the password cracking you can do on it, the social network engineering are dangerous. But again, we don't know how to shore up our perimeter to secure our systems if we're not aware of what's out there. And when you see Kali Linux and what it can do, well, you'll become very fearful, but you'll also take every measure to harden your defenses, so to speak. Now, Kali Linux, I just said, you could download this and have this up and running an hour after you walk out of here today. The main component of Kali Linux is investigating its functionality, and there are tons of resources out there on, on the web. There are YouTube videos, how to do packet sniffing, how to do password cracking, things of this nature. So all you need to do is go out and research these, apply them ethically, which is going to lead me to my ethical discussion here in just a minute, and document it in the discussion board. So the Kali Linux discussion board will be the most lengthy of the final projects. But it is a great toolkit. Now note, if you pursue this, if you're a system and network administrator, it, may t it could take you two to three years to understand the full functionality of Kali Linux. That is how extensive it is. And again, it, it is lethal what you can do with it. <laughs> Lastly, the Agile Extreme programming with Eclipse and Java. If you are transferring to a computer science program, if you know programming is your future, I highly recommend this final project. This too does not require a virtual machine. You have to download Eclipse. Eclipse is a integrated development environment that supports extreme programming, extreme or agile programming. Extreme or agile programming is a methodology. Next week we will study programming. So this will become more accessible. Agile extreme programming is a type of software engineering. So it actually looks at the process of programming. How can we manage this process better? So it is really, it's a great project. So, and this will take you probably six to 10 hours as well. So just know that in advance, get started right now. You will have no jeopardy of, of not, fit, not completing it. Lastly, if you have something else in mind, I've accepted other emergent topics. I've had students implement the Arduino, Raspberry Pi, do things in robotics, Internet of Things. This semester, I have a student, and I forget which sensor she purchased, but she has it in her garden, in her greenhouse, that's measuring moisture levels and automatically determining when the plant should be watered. 
So I'm, I'm open to any other topics you have or, or projects you have, just pass them by me for approval. So that is the final project. Next, I want to introduce the ethics discussion board. Again, as with the final projects, please read this entire page to understand the comprehensive picture. <clears throat> In summary, what you'll need to do, find a topic or article that we can discuss. And as a recommendation, should you have, should you need, in the right here, in this tag cloud, you can find ethics. So I've been tagging articles that were concerned with ethics. And of course, security, privacy, we could easily discuss any one of those as well. You need to understand the nature of information and information ethics, which I'll present in just a minute below. Ethical theory, where you need to apply this, and I'll come back to this and choose an applicable tenant from the ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. And lastly, you will be required to provide an APA citation. So let's look at this first. First, as a basis, we need to understand the difference between physical entities and information. So much of the ethical discussions that we have can be attributed to this difference. So if we look at this, physical items wear out. We know that replicated at the expense of the manufacturer. Let me give you an example. I could reverse engineer a car out there in the, in the parking lot, but the cost to me to actually reproduce it would be prohibitive, right? To get all the parts, the time that it would take, or set up a, a manufacturing assembly line, it would be prohibitive. So very different. <clears throat> Physical items replicated at the expense of the manuf manufacturer exist at a tangible location, and when sold, the seller no longer owns the thing. I sell my car, of course, I don't own it anymore. Very different from information, right? I can rip, you know, a movie, a song. I have it, you know, .avi, mp3, something like that. I shouldn't ethically sell it, but I could. But if I sold that information, I would still have that on my hard drive. Very different from physical items. The cost of information is quite often that initial cost to make it. The initial cost to make a movie. The initial cost to record a song. So to recover that cost, I base my pricing on whatever I sunk into it. Very different from a car, cars designed, developed. But when I pay for a car, I'm not really, I'm paying some for the design, things like that. But what I'm paying for is the labor, the manufacturing, that it actually costs to make that car. So again, very different. So information costly to produce but cheap to reproduce. Pricing set to recover the sunk cost. Okay, And price is typically based on the value to the customer. So when we look at this, there are other components here. When we look at information and ethics, privacy, accuracy, property, accessibility, and accuracy is a very interesting one. Consider, because we'll look at the ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct here in a minute. What if I wrote a program for tax software, but it had bugs in it? And because of the bugs, users submitted incorrect tax documents. And what if they were audited? You can see where accuracy is very relevant here. Who's responsible? Right now, I, I would say the person who created that tax software is responsible. But do we actually have legislation here that goes after it this way? In a minute, we'll look at the ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. Again, accuracy could also be software's completeness, robustness. Microsoft, Microsoft, Google, all of these companies typically or traditionally, historically, put out software that has bugs in it, right? Security flaws. So if you have Microsoft Windows and you're hacked because of a security flaw, is Microsoft coming back and compensating you for your whatever's been hacked? No. So there are ethical issues here that we need to understand. So 
you will be choosing a topic. We understand why ethics are different, but you'll need to apply one of the theories. So I'll state this several times. In your discussion board posts, I am not evaluating your perspective. You could have a perspective as far away from me as possible. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking at, of course, you choose a topic. You're going to choose a supporting ethical theory and then apply a tenant, a principle, from the ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. So what are the three primary theories? Stockholder, stakeholder, and social contract. Stockholder theory. Stockholder theory means that the only thing I care about is that bottom line, making money for my stockholders. To some extent, and I don't support this, I don't care if I hurt people, right? All I want to do is make money for my stockholders. And there are, it's, it's valid. You know, this is capitalism. This is a free market. Now, of course, we shouldn't be hurting people. But stockholder theory, my only concern is making money for my stockholders. And if this is my ethical construct, you're going to see how it's going to drive my decision making. Stakeholder theory. Stakeholder theory extends beyond stockholder theory. Well, I'm concerned about making money for my stockholders. By the way, I've turned my new Apple iPhone off with volume down many times. It just keeps ringing. Stakeholder theory, I'm now concerned with people who have a stake in my company. So employees, things of this nature. Pardon me. My wife. So, and but stakeholder theory is also open for interpretation. Facebook. Is a user of Facebook a stakeholder? And we think about Facebook, how they share information and collect private information. So again, there are opportunities for discussion here. Social contract theory. Social contract theory means that I am, my organization should produce more good than the resources it consumes. So now, there are impacts to all this. Recall that business drives. All of my decisions should be based on a business perspective. And we have to understand that. If I look at, again, information, we live in a time to where we have unparalleled opportunity to monitor or even survey, surveillance, provide surveillance on our employees. We can track them. Maybe their phones have a GPS device, right? Maybe they have an RFID card. All of these things. But what's the impact of this? Okay, you know, the, a senior decision maker may think that, okay, I'm going to increase efficiency. I'm going to track my employees everywhere. What does that do for employee morale? Probably lowers it. What happens when employee morale is lowered? Productivity decreases. Bless you. So we have to look at all of the impacts. If we're going to do this, do we seek out and hire different types of employees? Do my human resources costs go up for psychological profiling, for things of this nature? So again, we have to be aware of that big picture. The ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. Please read through this. And there are many things, again, with this ethics discussion board, you're choosing a article. You're going to choose a ethical theory construct or a basis for your discussion, for your argument. And just state it, you know, I've chosen this article and here's the citation. And the basis of my discussion is I ascribe to social contracts, construct theory. I ascribe to stockholder theory. So again, I'm not making any assessment on your perspective, your beliefs, your opinions. I'm just looking at how you apply them. And you need to cite one of the tenets of the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct here. And a lot of them are general. Contribute to society and human well-being. Well, okay, I work for some, you know, social computing company, networking, you know, Facebook. 
Is what I'm doing to collect this information, am I really contributing to society? Okay. So again, there are many different perspectives here. Avoid harm to others. Well-intended actions, including those that accomplish assigned duties, may lead to harm unexpectedly. Okay. In such an event, the responsible persons or persons are obligated to undo or mitigate the negative consequences. Again, I just gave the example, Microsoft Windows has security bugs. Has Microsoft ever come to you and said, oh, sorry, you were hacked. Please let us make reparations or accommodations. No. So again, you're going to find, we're going to find a lot of conflicts here throughout the industry. Some are straightforward, some are not. But again, just make your argument. So give proper credit, honor property rights, so digital rights management, of course, applies. Respect the privacy of others. Apple was tracking people in California on their phones, using the phone's GPS, without the user's knowledge. Other companies are doing the same thing. So there's, again, we live in an environment where things have just changed so rapidly. And of course, now we're in an information environment unlike previous physical environments. So the nature, the distinction between physical items and information is very different. And again, we're in our infancy. You know, you look at other disciplines, you look at even business, you look at chemistry, biology, mathematics, hundreds, thousands of years that they've been around. Computer science, 50. The age of the internet, the World Wide Web, 20. We're in our infancy. We don't even understand all of the complexities all of the effects, the consequences of what we're doing now. We can look at, you've heard me state this before, health with microwaves, Wi-Fi signals, cellular. You know, we just keep boosting the speeds, increasing the frequencies. Well, we are now in that frequency range that we use for cooking food. So, so anyways, read through the ACM code of ethics and professional conduct. And then lastly, I did give some advice for the APA citation. My favorite site is Purdue's OWL site, but I also recommend you compose your discussion board in Microsoft Word. And Microsoft Word has the functionality to format an APA citation for you. So use that as well. So again, in summary, you'll choose a topic, and again, if, if one doesn't come to mind, go to that tag cloud field on the right-hand side of CSS100.com and, and click on that ethics tag. You will base your discussion, cite it. My discussion is based on social contract, con contract theory. My discussion is based on stakeholder theory. In your discussion site, the ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct, principle 1.4 states this. I find the company is in accord with that. I don't find the company is in accord with that. Okay. I'm looking for 350 to 500 words, which is essentially a sheet of paper. 350 is actually on the shy side. You could think of it probably as three paragraphs, maybe two really meaty paragraphs. So that's essentially what is, what is uh, involved here. So that is the ethics discussion board. So now, jump back into